From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, former mayor of San Diego and candidate for California governor, Kevin Faulkner, and film critic, Christian Toto, with Gina Grad on news and Bald Brian on sound effects, and now, the eight-hour podcaster for the 24-hour woman, Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The choice we've got on the mandate, you get it on. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks for sharing. We love that about you, right, Gina Grad? That's right. Handball, Brian. Oh, my God. Hmm. This computer's old, and it freezes, and I had a good drop, but it's not playing. Why don't you just tell us? <laughs> yeah, it'll come up. Okay. It's frozen. Here we go. Perfect. All right. Well, tell me when you're How's ready. <laughs> uh, we, uh, this weekend, Oklahoma City, uh, Kyle Dunnigan. Entitlement alert. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see, I knew it get played right when I was talking. I'll give you a... All right. Yeah, uh, we'll try it again. And bald, Brian. Entitlement alert. <laughs> uh, Drop it in. So, Bricktown Comedy Club, uh, tickets are going fast. I just talked to Mike, so it's almost sold out. But nice. uh, you might be able to get a few, and uh, Kyle's going to join us for the uh, Friday show. So, he's always hits it out of the ballpark in those environments. So, we got that uh, coming up. Um, and then we'll do uh, stand-up after that, and then uh, another live show uh, on Saturday, and then stand-up after that. All right. So, we got breaking news. I found a Kanye West song that I like. Hey. Oh my God! Is How Gary we're talking? Here? Yeah, I told Gary. Okay, good. He had to he kind deserves of, to know. Kanye's rapping on it, but it's not a Kanye song. Maybe that's why I like it. But uh, my daughter does this weird thing, which is she wants to go out for drives at night, which is fine. And then she picks up her friend, and <clears throat> he does a weird thing. Like, remember being a kid, like. My house is three minutes from this friend's house, you know, and I always just say, text your friend when we're leaving and just have her wait outside. Right. And then her thing is like, I'll text her when we get there. And my Mm -hmm. thing is like, well, then we're waiting to pick her up and burn a lot of my hard earned fossil fuel. Like, why don't you just tell her stand outside? Like, that's what kids do. You know what I mean? Like, just we'll be there in four minutes. Just go ahead. Go outside. If you have to pee, this is the perfect yeah, time. Yeah, pee Dump out and then go, uh, go outside. But it's always like, nah, we'll text you when we get there. So uh, we do that. And then her friend gets in. And then her friend kind of becomes the DJ of the car. She plugs her phone in. And then they just blare their music the entire time. Uh, with young money, z- cash money. Yeah, with zero conversations. And my thing is, <laughs> is like, maybe it's a guy thing. Maybe it's a girl thing. I don't know. Like, in my world, I'd want to talk. Maybe well, not with have, me there. I have a quick question. Was there any discussion? Was there like an invitation? Like, hey, Susie Q, we'd love to hear what's on your phone. Like, was she inv- or was she just like, I got DJ? Because my question is, can you imagine doing that in somebody else's car as a kid? I was smacked by Roberta Messix in her Volvo wagon for simply trying to impersonate her voice. That uh, I got a backhand across the <laughs> face just for that. I mean, can you imagine... How about just the simple act of whacking kids in cars? You, you know what I mean? That oh, a part I, of I my childhood. Yeah. You just whack. Well, the deal was is there are human beings behind me in this vehicle. They are engaging in some behavior I do not like. I shall blindly reach backwards while operating the vehicle and attempt to traumatize one more or or more of them. Like, I'm just going to take my hand. I don't care if I hit the wrong kid. Might be mine. <laughs> might not. I don't care if the kid is trying to replace his retainer no. or put a contact oh, lens in or drinking out of Floss. a sharp straw or flossing <laughs> or has a conch shell that he's blowing. I don't care. No. I'm just going to reach behind me with my free hand. And I'm going to whack that kid. And by the way, I never really did this math, but it was always their good hand. Because in America, you drive on the left. That's your right hand. That's your cross hand. That's your power punch. Yeah, you reach back with your good hand. (laughs) Your finisher. And uh, whack the kid in the, the face. Again, you may get the kid in the face that you wanted to get. You may get some, there may be some collateral damage. Either way, I'm just going to blindly reach back and whack a kid. You'll get kid. Yes. 
Yes. My first thought of uh, Vis a Vis the music was um, when I was like, you know, a teenage boy, like, you know, high school, I was driving by ourselves with my friends. You know, the music would go on, it would go up, or it's a bunch of dudes who wouldn't talk to each other. I would imagine young ish teenage girls would be totally into gabbing. However, then it dawned on me. Natalia will not cop to this, but I need all the parents of teenage girls listening to tweet uh, tweet me tweet me right. That's your, my new version yeah. of Google me right. They were texting back and forth. I guarantee. Well, she was Ooh. driving. Wasn't Natalia uh, driving? Yeah, yeah. Natalia but, was driving. Ah, uh, I thought you were driving. Uh, no, no. Sorry, but it's a good it's a good thought, and I'll yeah. bet if Dad is driving and listening to Guy right. Lombardo. They're probably they're, they're going back and forth. In this yes. case, uh, Natalia's driving. And the idea is then we pick up the friend and we blare the music. And then at some point I always go, don't you guys want to talk? Are we just going to, I mean, why did you pick up your friend to just drive? But that's what they want to do. Huh. So they well, do. They, they want to talk. They want to talk. Yeah, they yes. want to but talk. But <laughs> what could what could that spark from embarrassing dad that is not worth risking? Yeah. Well, I look at myself as cool dad, but if you oh, want to well. use labels, fine. I'm sure you do. Swing by the Home Depot. I'll pick up a five gallon bucket. I'll put on my head, and you guys can have at it. And if we get in an accident, I'll have that much more protection. So, uh, so now they're playing their teenage girl music. And uh, as, as it works with all music, after the 15th uh, road trip we've done, I'm starting to like some of the songs. You're getting into some of the songs. I'm getting right. into some of the songs. And That's for a reason. They're pop, pop, they're pop songs. They're pop songs. And the one they played last night was by Estelle with who um, learned to ride the unicycle. Big time. Wow. Right. This, kid's, this kid's into old movies and a unicycle. That's fantastic. <laughs> I know. Does he have like an auga horn and a spraying uh, carnation? Uh, he told me if he could learn it, he'd be the bee's knees at school. And <laughs> 23 skidoo himself right out of here. I think it's two for some reason. Yeah, it rhymes. But, uh, so I anyway. was heard 22 skidoo. Oh, I thought it was 23 skidoo. Well, 22's got a little bit of more rhyme to it. I, I, I agree. That's but all look, I've ever heard. I don't know. Maybe they did a sequel. I'm like, saying like, it is. Like Oceans. I'm 23, 23 skidoo. Wow. I wish I was 22. I've been saying 22 skidoo my uh, entire adult life, and it has no. always been 23 wow. skidoo. 23 skidoo, an American slang phrase popularized in the early 20th century. Well, it generally refers to leaving quickly. Well, Brian, Thanks to Chris for finding that. Brian owes oh, you an apology. You. <laughs> I sure do. Um, all right. So 22 skidoo. So now, <laughs> now that he's... You know, getting near six foot tall and he's 150 pounds and has B.O. Now he wants to learn to ride the unicycle, which is brutal because I have to hold his ass up on Top this heavy. unicycle. Oh, it, it, it's it's a lot easier to do with a nine year old who wants to who wants to get into it. But he announced he wants to do it. Of course, I'm like, all right, we're riding this unicycle, which, of course, means I got to ride the unicycle, too. So uh, I handed uh, Olga my phone and I said, I'm going to take a hot lap around this house. All right. I haven't been on the unicycle in some years now, but uh, I just... It's like riding a unicycle. <laughs> I just filled up the uh, tires and uh, tire. I put it... Uh, the tire, That's sorry. I did a lap and there's, there's a lot of sharp corners in my house that are unforgiving. So I was trying to stay clear of it, but at the... At the end of the hall, there's a tight turnaround, and I was trying to get around Hair it. Hairpin turn. Yeah, it is. Dead man's curve. The toughest thing to do on a unicycle, the big sweepers are fine. It's the real tight turnaround where you have like sure. five foot of width to bring it around. Because that, that motion requires an arm throw and a jerking motion and a kind of whip around. I'll, I'll show it to you guys. I think we have the first one where I don't make the corner, but uh, <laughs> Max a paddle find the second one yeah there it is here we go so i uh oh this is maybe the this is the second one i think i make it on this one. Oh no i don't make it on this one so i'm just piling through my house and when i go through my house the the challenge is you have to kind of thread the needle you got to go around oh. stuff and through stuff and look at you and try not to catch your orbital socket on something that's got an edge. Ooh. Try not to go through a plate glass window. Tight window. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, tight window right there. Yes. Oh, Look at you. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I said oh, to wow. freak all <laughs> out by heading toward the <laughs> stairs and speeding up. And I think I saw in the background the, uh, oh, 
Nice. Oh, oh shit. That was, that was, that was, that was good. fairly deft for an old that man. That was good. I know. And I saw the uh, <laughs> roller with the disc on top. Were you practicing? Yeah, the, you know, the double ender. Disc? Yeah, that's now a uh, sunny scene. But I have one where I made it, and I'll I'll uh, show you guys that Where did one. you see that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it up at amcorolla.com. Uh, that's impressive. Let's see. So, you know, the thing about the unicycle is... Uh, after an hour of trying to get Sonny to take half a pedal on one, uh, my thing is like, now when I ride it, you're getting a little something, I don't know, some some element of appreciation that you didn't formally possess. Sure. Because um, it just became the guy who rides the unicycle. All right, you can, uh, <laughs> you can roll it. Go, go, go. Oh. <laughs> it's your hype, man. <laughs> Yeah, I just handed her my phone. But I do in oh, this go. one. Okay, keep up. Keep I, up, I, I make it around. Curve. I make it around oh, the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Almost in a breaststroke motion with your arms. Yes, you almost come to a stop, and then you have to kind of whip it around. All wow. right, uh, so I'm done bragging. Uh, Kevin Faulkner is on. He was the mayor of San Diego. San Diego, second largest city in California, so they say. Uh, and um, he did good good work there with the homelessness. And, yeah, we uh, had him many, on to talk about mm-hmm. some innovative stuff there. Doing many many well, subjects. Back. Now's uh, on the ballot, I think, for uh, the, uh, well, a candidate for the recall, if uh, Newsom gets recalled. Good to see you, Kevin. Um, thanks. It's great to be back with you. Thanks for having me. So uh, first things first. I Last I checked, I think uh, they're up about 1.7 in the recall ballot initiative. They need 1.5, but they think that certain amount of those are going to be X'd out. There's always a certain amount that are invalidated, the signatures. And I'd heard... That normally that's a a medium to high number, but in the preliminary stuff, it's about 16 percent. So it's low. It's on the low end for these ballot initiatives in terms of the uh, signatures being confirmed. So instead of needing two million to get to one point five, because 25 percent of them are going to be canceled out, maybe only need one seven. But uh, your thoughts, Kevin? I think that's exactly right. I mean, look, this week qualify. Um, and they're getting about 100,000 signatures a week now. Uh, the deadline is is March 17th. So, yes, they're blown past that 1.5. I think you're going to end up getting closer to 1.9, probably 2 million. And, oh, by the way, these are signatures from Californians who are Democrats, Republicans, and independents all throughout the state uh, that are at their wits end and want to change, and they want to change now. So this recall is going to qualify, and we will likely have – an election for governor later this year. Um, and uh, of course, you're going to throw your hat in the ring for that one. I am. And and I have. And look, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, and appreciate this, you know, as we've talked about before, when you look at what's not happening in California, what's not going right, um, you know, the issue of, of homelessness, which, you know, I feel passionately about and the really the dramatic action we took in San Diego where the only big city where homelessness actually went down in California by double digits. And, you know, when we're looking at what's happening right now in terms of our public schools not being open, there is absolutely no reason why our kids aren't in school or our teachers aren't back in the classroom. And I say that not just as a candidate for governor, but as a father with two kids in public schools. The fact that our private schools are open where teachers are safely teaching, kids are safely learning, and the fact that our public schools aren't open one of the only states where that's not happening, it's abysmal. Our state can do dramatically better. Oh, agreed. Um, when it comes to the schools, I don't know. Does Could Newsom decree that the schools shall open tomorrow? Does he have that power as the governor? The governor has extraordinary powers, as we all know from the executive orders that were placed on California small businesses too many of which, of course, had zero science behind them, as an example, shutting down outdoor dining and all the changes that are happening. So the governor has extraordinary powers, but he's not using it now. And he's, he's not using it to the detriment, obviously, of our kids and of our families. And the fact that, you know, the governor came out with a plan, as you know, and said public schools will be open by February 1st. 
well, another broken promise that is failing our kids and putting putting our kids farther and farther behind. Look, a, a computer screen is no substitute for, for a classroom. And I, you know all, all the mental health issues that, that, are, that are right and folks are rightfully talking about, that is real. We need to open our schools and yet the governor continues to dither, no leadership and no action. I know. My poor son has been forced to ride a unicycle in a mansion for the last nine months. He's, he's withering away. All right. So here's what I was thinking about today. And I do not understand why we don't approach life this way or as it pertains to governing a state or city. Um, the teachers unions are saying in these areas where there's a large groups of Hispanic people living together in a small apartment, intergenerational and all that with the high spread and let, you know, it's a recipe for disaster. The dad has to go out and be a, a cook. The mom has to go to work, uh, at the, at the pottery barn or the, or, or at the food bank or wherever the mom has to work. And then grandma's living with them. And then they all come back into this small apartment where they're told to, you know, um, cower under the bed and there's a high transmission of COVID there. But what I don't know, here's what I don't understand. There are plenty of school districts like the school district my kids are in where there's no spread, there's no in infections, there's no disease, there's no anything. It's just, so why can't somebody go, well, look, it seems to be okay in this district. We, I don't see there's a problem here. We don't have grandmas living. I don't even like my parents. So there's no grandma and nana living. There's no, the houses are big. They're spread out. There's square footage. It's a perfectly yeah. safe place to open. And there are many other school districts where they could go, well, let's just say that one could open and that one could open and this one can't. And then that one and that one could open. Why, why don't we have that system in place? Well, it's because there's been no leadership, Adam. And, and look, you, you're, you're talking logic, unfortunately. And, and the fact of the matter is, as you rightfully pointed out, schools are opening safely across this country. Private schools are open safely in California. Teachers are teaching and kids are learning. And so to continue to just, as I say, put out plan after plan with not actually the action behind it, where, where's the safest place for kids to be in school? in a classroom learning. What does the CDC said? Get kids back in the classroom. What does Dr. Fauci said? Get kids back in the classroom. There's no reason why our public schools are not open. And that's why you're seeing California families and the anger that is brewing all across this state. Again, this is not partisan driven. This cuts across the, the spectrum, all geographic, all demographics. California families need, deserve, and want their kids in school. I want my kids back in the classroom. Uh, Brian, did you have a question? Yeah, I did have a question for the mayor. I agree with you. I think most, I, I have to imagine this is a big uh, issue with public support, getting the kids back to school. We're all on the same page. My question for you is, if this uh, recall is certified, the election happens, it won't happen until October, at which point, God willing, this would be an extremely moot point. So yeah. what what are you going to run on? Uh, you can't run on you know, uh, getting the kids back in school. Hope, God willing, they'll be in school. Uh, at that point, where do you where do you pivot to? Good question. Well, 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 Brian, you're right. We we want all of our kids to be back in school now. We want all our kids not not a week from now, not a month from now, uh, but now. And yet we're still here, uh, obviously, and it hasn't been solved in California. We want it solved, and it should be solved. But well, I'll tell you, when when it comes to the issues that you know that are they're still not happening, how slow our state is in vaccine rollout. When t Californians are absolutely tired of the hypocrisy in terms of open and shutting all of the businesses, the fact that when you look at a governor that has not taken the action that the actions that we took in terms of reducing homelessness in California, a governor who's going to stand up for public safety and safe neighborhoods. No, I did not defund the police in San Diego. I increased the budget by seven percent. So I think those are just a host of issues where Californians they don't care if you have a R or a D next to your name. They want somebody who's going to come in and fix it and clean it up and get California back to being competitive in the great state that we are. That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, we got the bones for it. You know, we have the brains and the resources and the natural do, resources. We like, we are California. We have that. We're just being governed in this facocta way. <laughs> It's like the, watching my beloved USC Trojans <laughs> puke on themselves weekly. It's like you have so many resources and so much talent, and you're just brainlessly walking in circles. Yeah, and look, I, I can't, and I can't stress this enough. And 
you know, our business environment is incredibly important. And the fact that so many California jobs are going to other states, a, a governor that's absolutely clueless about what's really happening. And, and again, this, this is small businesses or entrepreneurs, folks. How about a governor that says, I want you to be successful? What can I do to help you grow your business and to make you successful in California? That's what's missing in Sacramento. Well, we played this clip. Maybe Max Apata can find it of Newsom that we heard when we were in uh, Utah on a podcast. But mm. the person that was interviewing him said, like, people are leaving. What's the plan? And he's like, hey, where are you going to go? That's his, that was his plan, is, is asking where you're going to go to people, to an interviewer who was telling him people were leaving. I mean, it's, that, that, it's, it's, it's like if, you're, if your wife said, uh, I want a divorce, I'm fucking the pool man, and you went, where are you going to go? Like, well, to the pool guy's house. That's what I'm going to do. That's, I'm telling you what I'm doing. Like, he's... Newsom has Newsom has a personality disorder. I, there's something wrong with the way he processes information. I mean, if you just distill this clip down to its basic elements, it's a person that is sort of on his side saying people are leaving. What are we going to do about it? He then gives a Jerry Brown quote saying, hey, Jerry Brown says, uh, where are you going to go? And then the person goes, well, they'll go to Texas. And he goes, no, that's just what Jerry Brown is saying. That's not me. Yeah, so it's it a synapse problem. And then later on, he goes on to tell a story about a couple he knows that moved to Utah and is very happy. I mean, there's, there's, an, there's a serious problem in processing. He doesn't process information. That's just a sit-down, casual interview. That's essentially like uh, somebody saying, um, I'm lactose intolerant. Good, I'll get some more ice cream for you. <laughs> that he's not, he doesn't process information. When I asked him about traffic, he said, I, I saw a bumper sticker I like. said, uh, you're not in traffic. You are traffic. That has nothing to do with nothing the issue of traffic. He, he's, he's, a, he's an imbecile. I know he's a shyster and I know he, he, does, you know he puts real cream on his teeth and everything. But the real problem with Newsom is he doesn't process information. I don't think he knows what's going on in his state. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Kevin. <laughs> well, I, think, I think you hit the nail on the head, Adam. And and you well, cannot- hold on. Let's let's just listen to it for a second because I want I want everyone to Kevin. You may you probably haven't heard it, but you shall delight when you. This is your competition, Kevin. Former Governor Brown said it best. Where the hell are you going to go? And you know, I love I love Texas. Where? Don't get me wrong. Is that the Dude, new California motto? Where the hell are you going to go? I don't know, but he said it, and I. But it was an interesting point because where are you going to get? So many of the other things in the balance sheet. But you are aware that I've lived there for two decades, essentially. And this is the first time I've had people really talking about not being there and not that they could figure it out somewhere else. I don't think that's true. I think they can figure out where they're going to go. Yeah. And um, then you, that meets, uh, but it's not a zero sum game. Right. OK, I, I have a friend who just went to uh, Utah. Uh, beautiful. I, it may, may be the right thing for him. Um, they've made a ton of money. They have the ability to take their kids out of public school into private school, and they're doing that. And, um, you know, they I imagine they're not going to turn their back forever on California. <laughs> OK, but they're very happy there. They're making a ton of money. Ask, and they're private school. Ask me about people leaving California. Let me Sounds give you good. an example of someone leaving California. That, that's a process. He's having he's having difficulty processing information. I'm, I'm assuming that's a personality disorder. That disconnect is astounding. Uh, astounding for being so out of touch because the reality is the California jobs are leaving. It's not just the, the big companies that we hear so much about, whether it's, you know, uh, HP, Oracle, et cetera. It, these are, and, and I can tell you all of across the state, medium-sized businesses are saying, uh, I'm leaving, I'm, I'm going. And you name the state, Adam, it's Utah, it's Nevada, it's Texas, it's Florida, states that are not over-regulated. Again, it's time for a governor that says, it's important to keep you here. It's important for us to have opportunity for our kids, for my kids, for everybody's kids to want to stay in California, to grow up. You cannot take California jobs for granted because when you do, folks are going to leave. Gina? You know what's funny about it, just as an observation, the things that you're saying are very reasonable and very, you know, on, on either side of the aisle, it sounds like everyone can agree with you. But if you take what you're saying next to what Governor Newsom is saying, it's it's wild. 
it's it's a crazy you know extreme view you know in in comparison but what you're saying is so reasonable i can't think of anyone democrat or republican that would would disagree it's just it's what's good for california not what's good for a party i think one of my problems is done i had to do that is is San Diego? Hold on. Won a Democrat Sorry. Majority city. Kevin, hold on People a second. Kevin, hold on. You say that statement again. Right, you you, you know. broke up at the top. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sir? Okay. No, I, I, I just I, I, I agree with what your hypothesis. People don't care if it's Republican or Democrat. It's hey, can you roll up your sleeves and get stuff done? That's what I was known for as mayor of San Diego. You know, Republican in a majority Democrat city. But they want you to pave the streets. They want you to keep neighborhoods safe. They want you to reduce homelessness. That's That was my job as mayor. And we need a governor that understands you have to get results and not spend all your time virtue signaling and not getting anything done. I agree. There's something that I've been drilling down on for a long time, which is this sort of good vibes thing, which is that's fine for your spiritual healer friend. But it's not good for running states and cities. Like, I want to hear, like, you know, Newsom could have easily said to the person that was interviewing him, yeah, I understand that's going on. People are leaving. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a better climate for them to entice them to stay. And I may uh, I may lower some taxes or I may offer some rebates or I may... Um, uh, uh, improve their schooling or offer vouchers. And like nuts and bolts, he just wanted to talk about his friends that left for Utah. But it's it's it's, it's it is the opposite of a of a plan. Uh, Kevin, let me give a, a plug out to you. Um, website, Kevin Faulkner. It's, it's F A U L C O N E R dot com. And uh, you can shoot him a tweet at Kevin Faulkner, or sorry, at Kevin underscore Faulkner as well. Uh, I'd appreciate you coming back after the recall and uh, I look forward to it. giving us a booster shot. And yes, just as a I'll, quick, I'll be, I'll be back next month. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> it's going to happen. Just as a quick insert, because I couldn't remember where she came from and I remembered it was um, San Diego, I would imagine. Uh, Mr. Faulkner has some things about to say or had some thoughts about Lorena Gonzalez. She was the assemblywoman from San Diego who told Elon Musk to go F himself when he oh. left for Texas. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, a good way not to keep businesses in California. That right. does not represent who we are as Californians. Thanks, uh, Kevin. Appreciate it. And uh, thanks, Gina. Thank yeah. You. yeah. F yourself. I mean, see, <laughs> this is, by the way. I've been I've been harping on a lot of this shit, which is, you know, I said, you got to fucking run, run the state like you run a casino. When the whale comes in, you comp them the room and they go, well, if we comp him the room, then we'll have to comp the old ladies playing the nickel slots. No, no you don't. That's not a good business. Plan. Elon Musk is a whale. Right. And like, I forget about him personally, like his own personal wealth. He creates tons of jobs. Tons and tons of jobs, which, which creates tons and tons of tax revenue. And you think about all the tentacles of the octopus with the suppliers to all the subcontractors for his jobs. You know, all the SpaceX and Tesla. Just the trickle-down effect from that guy and his businesses is huge. And the disconnect is this weird emotional thing. Like, uh, Gonzalez is over there from San Diego, like, hey, fuck yourself, Elon. Like, you who creates nothing, you understand you get paid from the taxes that he creates. Do you not understand that? This is a, this is part of this sort of general, like, leveling of the playing field. Like, nobody's better than anybody else. Everyone is the same. We're all the same as God created us. That's fine sort of spiritually, but practically understand who's keeping the fucking lights on and try not to insult them. How about just the product, just the cars, just the test the cars with the registration and the taxes and the fees and the delivery fees. And it, it's uh, that alone is is uh, gone. monumental. Well, it's all it's all gone and it's going to continue to go unless somebody steps in. And as I've said you just do the same thing we did with production. Like all the production is running away. Hey, you're all going to Prague and you're all going to Atlanta and you're all going to Canada. Hey, everybody, sorry. We're a little greedy, a little grabby. 
I understand we sent you packed to the airport. Mm-hmm. We're going to put in some things and entice you to do your filming here. So we, instead of, instead of zero, we'll get something versus nothing, which is what you get when people leave the state to do their filming. All right. Uh, we will take ourselves a break. We'll be right back after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Adam, Greg from Vegas. I was playing F. Mary Kill with my girlfriend, and her candidates were you, Brian, and Dawson. She said she'd kill Brian, and normally she'd marry a guy like Dawson, but he probably smells like an ashtray, so she'd F him and marry the ace man. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Yeah, Dawson doesn't, well, he smells like an ashtray, but I don't think it's an <laughs> ashtray. So I'm, I'm bailing you out. I got your back on this one, Dawson. I, l- I love how at the very least we know who we're going to kill. <laughs> Bitch, you can't kill me. Cancer <laughs> tried twice. Good luck. So I, uh, <clears throat> I was uh, back to uh, Sonny, so I got him. I, I'm I'm asking everyone's help to uh, <laughs> learn to teach a uncoordinated kid who's a little top heavy to uh, this, ride ride a unicycle. This was a young man who was initially resistant to the idea of running a bike <clears throat> and doing yoga. <laughs> yes, he he's decided he wants to ride a unicycle. So for me, I'm 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 bursting with pride and joy now. My kids, my daughter has an amazing sense of balance. And um, you can tell what they, uh, how old's Tessa now? Uh, she's four, 40, 41 pounds-ish. You can tell with Tessa, you put her up on one of those double-ended boards or the BOSA board or whatever it is with the cylinder in the middle of it and what have you. Yep. And you hold her hands in front. She'll no, get on no. it. And then... You watch her little hips, and uh, as Shakira would say, or mm, Kesha. They don't lie. Yeah, they don't lie. No, Shakira. So, so you'll see them go, tit, 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 tit. You'll, you'll, see that, you'll see their balance just kicking in. It won't be anything they're thinking about. You'll sort of see them. So you mm-hmm. can tell mm-hmm. someone's balance by their ability to correct. So if someone has bad balance, wanna- yes. If You're 100% right, Tessa. It has it. She's like her mom. She's a good athlete. Not like me. She's a good athlete. Yeah. She so just has it. It's, it's, you don't have to teach anything to her. She's, good. she's strong and she's agile. When you have balance, you learn everything super fast because you can kind of mirror and mimic when you have balance. So you put the kid on that board or anything, a skateboard or whatever, and then you'll see him start to fall off one side and you'll see how fast they correct or what they do right. to correct or you know over correct and go ass over tea kettle the other way but the kids that don't have balance just sort of keep going the direction oh, they're yeah. going so natalia has balance i always had balance and um i uh got a little unicycle when she was little and i got my hacksaw out and i cut <laughs> the seat pipe the seat post i cut it because with the unicycle, if you lower it too much, it just hits the tire. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I had to get out a hacksaw and cut six inches off this thing. And I made a little mini unicycle. And Natalia didn't give two shits and never <laughs> rode it. So I kept telling her, you got the balance. You, you're right. the one with the balance. I could teach you how to do this in two days. And uh, no such luck. And then Sonny, who didn't have the balance... Uh, shared her lack of enthusiasm for learning the unicycle. So it all just fell by the wayside. But at some point, Sonny's into it. Now, I will tell this to everyone who's uh, thinking about this, but you guys can tweet me and tell me what to do, and I'll tell you what I've arrived at. First thing first, what people don't understand with the unicycle is you step up onto it, you get the pedals going at three o'clock and nine o'clock. You get them going just straight across. Straight across. Mm-hmm. Parallel. Sure. Then you take your right foot, usually, and you place it on top of the pedal that's closest to you. And then the big mistake that everyone has when they try to hop up is they just push down on the pedal as hard mm-hmm. as they can, in which case the unicycle slides under your butt and shoots out your ass. You have to jump up and be kind of limp-legged on that pedal. 
you, you don't push it down. You just hold it in place and you pop mm-hmm. up and then you get the other pedal going. So I got sunny. And then so what I do to teach people, if anyone wants to, is I get them up on the unicycle and then I tell them get at three o'clock and nine o'clock at the get the get the pedals going across evenly and then go back and forth two inches down two inches back two inches down two inches back just just go and sit straight up on it and get used to that feeling of it being underneath you and going back and forth it'll just rock a little forward not too much and a little back and do a little seesaw on those pedals if the pedals at uh, three o'clock and nine o'clock one side Drop it down to four o'clock and have the other side raise up to ten o'clock. If that's yeah, okay, yeah. and then go back again. Go then go down the other direction. So that was uh, that's what I was trying to do. He's getting so damn heavy, and he doesn't have a uh, a knack to it. So uh, for it, so I was like hanging on to the back of the seat and <laughs> hanging. He had his arm around me, and it was like. Um, it was really like a farcical comedy, but he was hanging on and I was like, hang on. Of course, Phil had to come check it out. So now oh, yeah. like Phil Awful. is just sniffing around the tire and Sonny's yelling to move and saying, so I uh, try to get him up, try to get him in his neutral position. You just have to be in that, that thing's got to be directly underneath <laughs> you. And then you can try to take a pedal or two. But I realized the only way to really do this would be to have those like gymnastic parallel bars Mm -hmm. lowered to the right height, like underneath your armpits, basically, and then get up in the middle of it. I mean, the only way to really practice alone on it and practice getting up and then just sort of pedaling forward while sliding your hands along the parallel bars. That's about... It kind of, it kind of sounds like physical therapy. Yes, that's, that's exactly what it is. (laughs) And uh, and I think psychologically, it makes it it's someone who's never been on a unified cycle. It it sounds easier to pedal forward than to get on and not move. So I think in your mind, if I could just get forward, I'll get going. Oh, uh, yeah. Staying in one place is without grabbing on anything. Yeah. So maybe I'll get him the parallel bars. And uh, for Christmas, I'll get him one of those uh, towel grab, one of those bars you grab onto so he can get off the toilet. <laughs> Sure. As long as we're going down this road, get him one of the bathtubs with the door. But um, a little ejector seat. It, <laughs> it, it, it was always. Uh, I always think about my buddy uh, Philip the Juggler because that guy would hop up on stage at the uh, Laugh Factory. The stage is miniature. It's like a miniature little stage, and he'd hop on it on his unicycle, and he'd just tread water up there, like just back and forth, just stand in one place. It, it was. So hard to do. I'm I'm adequate on a unicycle. I cannot do that. I can stop and kind of tread water for two or three Mississippi, but I'm not going to just sit there for a stand-up show and juggle bowling pins and machetes. But uh, you're so, not going to do stage business, right? So Sonny was hanging on to me, and it became like it, it really became like a comedy show because he was leaned over on me, and I was trying to push him back, you know, get him back onto the center and everything. But I think if I set up those parallel bars, and maybe I'll just make them, uh, that yeah, you can do a sawhorse version. Yeah. Yeah, this, the sawhorse version is like too low, and I'm gonna need. Well, I, I you need are to making kind of, this right. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would design something. I would figure something out. But there is a kind of point where, at the end of the day, if you can find it on Amazon for 225 bucks, if you think about your day at the hardware store, and then the version of this that you're gonna build that's not adjustable. And not as easy as as that one. At, at a certain point, you might be throwing good money after bad. I don't know. Wait, you mm. love that shit. You, you love making this stuff just for funsies. Yeah, you made your daughter's bed. Yeah, that has to be way harder than this. Well, in, in my world, this thing exists. Like the first question you ask yourself before you build something, like in my daughter's bed situation, it was a custom size and a custom this for fit in the room and blah, blah, blah. First question is like, does this thing exist? I don't know what you would call them. Parallel walking bars or like a pommel horse. 
No, well, I mean, not like a pothole. But like, horse. but like, if we like we said, if they have them in physical therapist's office, yes. we know they exist. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. And maybe it falls on a heading of physical therapy. You must be able to adjust them. You must be able to put them. There must be. They must be eight feet long, and you put them side by side, and they have a little stand, a little C stand or something, right. and you can probably do it. Is anything coming up, Max Pana? Yeah, I'm saying they're just called parallel bars. Are they? Uh, there's a gymnast version of it, and then there is a rehab version of it. But I don't know if they use the same one or not. How much they cost? Uh, about a little under fourteen hundred bucks. What? I'm seeing some. Wow. I'm seeing. I'm seeing one for uh, six hundred. I don't know. The but you're looking at gymnastic stuff. No, no. These are these are more like towards the rehab ones. They're floor mounted. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, Sonny said to me, well, how did you learn to ride the unicycle? And it's like, well, I had nothing but time on my hands when I was your age. And my dad had a girlfriend and her son, who may have been out of town or something, or with his dad, just had that unicycle just sitting in this bedroom. And I, I just hung on to a car fender for a day. So I, <laughs> I, I, fly. I feel sorry for whoever's car that was, but I just took it out in the street. And just got onto it and clung to a car fender. And once I got my balance on the car fender, I just took off. But I didn't take off. I took a pedal and a half and then hit the hit the ground and tried it again. Did you find here's something? One for, yeah, here's one for the low, low price of seven fifty, And it does look like what you're looking for. Just yeah. parallel bars that are Physi- adjustable. Look up physical therapy adjustable parallel bars. That's what this bars. is. This is at Rehab Mart. Mm. But they are expensive. Yeah. It's got to be a depressing place to work, right? <laughs> Hopeful place to work. Hello. Yeah, welcome to rehab, Mart. <laughs> Hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, not really. My my I've pelvis is shattered. Places. Yeah. Oh, I've you have. Places. They're, 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 they're pretty, they're, they're like the places that supply, you know what I mean? Like the uh, physical therapy offices. And while the physical therapy offices are bright and open and there's ball there and, and there's sunlight to throw and yeah, and bars and things to basically play with while you're rehabbing. Uh, yeah. The place that uh, stocks those, there's one in Santa Monica. I think it's on Santa Monica Boulevard and it's like really tight, narrow. It's just stuff piled on shelves shelves and tight narrow aisles and it's, it's it's dark and depressing adam you probably know this one there's one a giant one at the corner of santa monica boulevard and western mm-hmm. in east Ooh. hollywood oh, i'm already and depressed oh, it, oh, and there's boy. a burger king next to it and it's like five or six blocks away from um you know it's it's not far from the hospital from kaiser and children's hospital and it's just this big dusty dark medical supply place. everything's old everything's yes. been there for quite yes. some time I, uh, if I turn down the aisle where I see the lifter toilet seat, the toilet yep. seat bracket that holds you nine inches above the toilet height, uh, I got to turn and I got to head out. I got to jog for the car and slide across the hood and, uh, go full Starsky and Hutch with the siren I slap on top because I'm out of there. If I see that device, that is the most depressing it is. device you will ever see inside a home. Yeah. Uh, all right, so maybe I'll make this thing. You yeah. should. You should. Now here's a PVC. Pro- I mean, is that a no? Thing? Is but that no. But enough? Galvi, galvanized would work, not PVC. But what would really work? The best thing you could do, I imagine, I could do anything I wanted. Mm. But how much? How much That's do I really love the boys? The question. <laughs> I'll tell you what I could do, which would definitely work the best, which would be a harness with a tether that went up onto a sliding track. I that, used that in physical therapy once. Yeah, I just want the picture of that. You're literally talking about like post surgery, you know, like like spinal stuff. injury. <laughs> That I could uh, knock out pretty easily. I, I wouldn't make the harness part, but the other part, the problem with that is the mounting part. You got to mount yep. that track somewhere. The problem is convincing somebody to get in it and not look like a complete idiot. Yeah. You'd have to also kind of ratchet them up. Wow, I wonder what yeah. that thing is like called. Like a crane. Yeah. 
They have met pools. It's like a sus- suspension harness, yeah. I guess. Yeah, but right? it, 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 according to what I'm trying to do, the thing would have to slide for 10 or 12 feet along right. with you. So I, the whole track is easy. I just use the track they use for a sliding barn door, an upper track yeah. that just hangs off those ball bearing wheels. The harness you could get. The harness would just be like window washing harness or safety harness or something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> Gina, is that me? This is a company called Solo Step, and they do the the above yeah. tracking with the harness. So if you it's going to cost you. How to you. Walk again, yeah, yeah, it'll cost you. But you know, if somebody gets in an accident, you'll already be ready. I also, or maybe I'll just get one. Maybe I'll just get one of those wicker baskets with the hole in the middle of it that hangs off the chain over at the sex shop. That uh, yeah. oh sure, that, exactly. Uh, Brian's talking about. Good at circus yeah. of books. <laughs> hmm. All right, I can work this out. On the other hand, I'm going to need some kind of written commitment from Sonny because my thing is oh, like, if oh, I yeah. start going down this fucking road and you decide to abandon this shit, I'm going to be pissed. So far. I think I could, ah, I think I got a plan. All right. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out. I'm just going to go, I'm going to go the lower hand railing department. I'm going to go. Yeah, probably solid. The, the sliding harness thing is great, but you need to mount something onto the ceiling with lag bolts. And and I don't want to do the track. So I now, I now think I'm going to do the, uh, the lower. All right. I shall figure it out. I shall keep Good. you. I shall keep you posted. Uh, let's see. We have got a couple of calls on here. Uh, Chris from uh, New Jersey is fifty. Chris, hey, hi, guy. Hey guy. <laughs> What's going on? Congratulations on twelve years of your podcast. I've been a fan of yours for even longer than that. Having sat in on your show at Loveline and listening to your podcast well, since thanks. the beginning. I truly believe the world would be a better place because if everyone listened to you. Hello, Brian. Hello, Gina. I have two examples as to why the world would be a better place. Number one, I'm a teacher in the New York City area that teaches on site. And you're 100% right. So keep on that. What is the rules? that? What's the protocol for you? Well, to be fair. I, I don't teach in the public school system. I teach uh, upper level uh, at a conservatory and university level. So it varies from school to school. I teach in New Jersey and New York. And in New York, I'm on site. And what we do is we have half the class zoom in and half the class on site wearing masks, uh-huh. distancing. And they and... they rotate? Like an arts conservatory? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Do the Do you rotation. Just music or acting or what? What kind of conservatory? Uh, acting, acting. What? So half the kids that are there, they're the ones that are working, and the Zoomers will observe. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you find innovative Such. ways to keep them engaged, so they're not just watching sure. a screen. And then every other day, we alternate. And, yeah, and, you know, I mean, it's not perfect, but it works. Well, and I've been doing you know, it since I... the beginning of this. I would look at it as this way. Um, Look at it as like sustenance. Like uh, the kids in L.A. have been living off of nothing for a year. If somebody said, well, all I can give them is a hard-boiled egg and an orange twice a day, I'd go, well, that's a fuck of a lot better than what we got right now. That's something. That'll get a little sugar in their blood, you know? Yes, go back three days a week or do the alternating alternating days thing. Or What I'm saying is, is... I think the problem with L.A. in, in general is I always want to say, what's the plan? What is the plan? What's the plan for the homeless situation? What is the homeless plan? What is the traffic plan? What is the go back to school plan? And then you got a bunch of people who want to talk about it. But I'm like, I don't want to just talk about it. I want to hear what your plan is. And then I want to implement the plan like everyone else has been doing around the world versus we're the way LA works is we sit around, wring our hands and talk about how dangerous everything is potentially. My feeling is, is I want the plan. I'm not hearing a plan. It's, it's, a, it's I, one big circle talk. Of course it's the unions, but yes, could, go ahead. Could I interject. I actually taught in LS, LA USD for a short time too. And that was an interesting experience as a substitute teacher. What and was that, that was like? Bizarre. I was offered more full-time jobs by the mere fact that I showed up, 
substitute teach wearing a tie. <laughs> it goes a long way. I'm not lying. I am not. That is the truth. Yeah. The fact that I showed up, you know, but I want to get to my other point as to why the world would be a better place with you in it. Please. I'll um, limit you to 22 minutes. I understood. All state commercials have dropped the do not attempt tag where for their moon commercial. They so, did? Oh, that's good. Thank you yes, for that. If you happen to have a rover on the moon, you may attempt it. Right. Correct. Right. Okay. Wow. Well, Got to figure less than ten percent of the Allstate. Uh, oh, clientele. Adam, I would go less than five. Well, you don't know that, Brian. I, I'm I the, as a guess. You're being cynical. Yeah. I'm Class saying less event. than ten. Hey, four percent is less than ten, Brian. That's one hundred percent true. Why can't you just way. let him have this? <laughs> so, hey, crunch those numbers, Max Pat. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. Google me right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, sorry, Chris. Thank you. Are you good? I'm great. Thank you. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's a weird uh, phenomenon. Yes. I just thought of something, and as Brian would say, it's kind of half-baked in my brain, so let's see how it comes out and and help me here. But I think I could easily get, and when we were uh, talking to um, the mayor earlier, I could easily get the teachers' union to agree that Zoom school is incredibly inferior and subpar in a really easy way. All you have to do, like you said earlier, you know, why don't we do it by neighborhood? If La Kenyatta has no uh, illness, we'll send them to school. And if there's a, you know, a poor urban area that isn't, you know, know our exactly this, where then you're they'll going. stay home. Oh, really? So it's good enough. So so they don't get to have the in-person great superior education. They have to sit home with the shit computer right. school. They're gonna be like, you're going to create a even bigger chasm between the poor right. brown and black sure. kids but I thought in the it inner was city. Good enough. Right. <laughs> Their thing is like, let's just poison everyone's well and then everyone will put lead in all their water and then they'll all be brain damaged but they'll be equally brain damaged yes that's a very good thought experiment i have no idea why we can't parse things out that way um all right let's see let's talk to um john this is another thing too which is he wants to talk about youth sports which they completely they completely shut that down in California. And like I said, every time you go to Arizona, they're just a bunch of people coming from California so their kids can play soccer Yeah. in Arizona. I never can figure out what if if these things exist in other places, such as soccer in Arizona or schools in Florida, why can't you look at that and yeah, monitor it for 10 minutes? And once the coast is clear, then you go, oh, I'll do it. We'll do it, too. You know who the expert on that is? We have our very own field reporter that can tell you literally anything you want to know about youth sports open in Arizona. Because Teresa all day is shuttling one kid or the other to basketball, baseball, all the sports. And they're, so they are open. And Teresa can tell you anything you want to know about it. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we know it's safe because it, it it's, it's, it's literally... Here's how fucking retarded Los Angeles and California is. It's as if you had, let's say, you had a toaster oven. And I said, uh, hey, I'm in California. I'm not going to plug that toaster oven in. I don't know. That thing looks dangerous to me. And you're going, okay, fine. Took the toaster oven to Arizona and plugged it in. And you've been making fucking toast in it for seven months. And then they said, it's fine. Why don't you bring it back to California? I don't know. Sounds dangerous to me. They've plugged the fucking thing in everywhere. Europe and Asia and Florida and Arizona. They've plugged it in. It's fine. Just bring it in here. No, 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 no. We don't don't believe it's safe. But they're doing the same thing with the same kids and oftentimes the same climate. And look, toast. they don't want to go back to work. I mean, is there any other way to parse this out? There's no other way to think about this. They don't want to go back to work, and they're fucking the kids up. And because I dared to say something about it, they have a problem with me. I get it. You don't like people who disagree with you, and you want to fucking shut them down. I don't know. I would focus on other things like getting the fuck back to work. John, 43, East Bay. Hey, hey, Adam. Hey. Big fan. What's going on? Thanks for... <laughs> well, hey, uh, you know, you're always talking about um, 
how uh, people in California are sheep and uh, no one's kind of just getting out there and doing their own thing. I am uh, I am I flabbergasted gonna... by how fucking sheeple and weak ever and cowardly everyone is in California. I am I'm stunned yep. that restaurants haven't just opened, that people aren't just going back to their lives. I am fucking shocked by I'm saddened by how fucking yep. weak everyone is. But yeah, but we're Californians, so it's pathetic. So yes. Well, we've uh, we've uh, had a little bit of a rebellion group out here in the East Bay area. I don't want to say the city because who knows we could get get in trouble if someone hears this and tries to be a tattletale. But uh, we've been running sports since the fall. Just a rebel organization. A bunch of dads got together and said this isn't affecting kids. But is and, it is uh, it like Fight Club where you have to find a basement? And, <laughs> you know, first Lou's rule. You know? <laughs> yeah, Lou, let us kind of like that, but we just find a park. And we made you like this as a as a as a builder. We built our own soccer goals out of PVC. My brother's wow. a general contractor, and he gave us the the posts that uh, you know the temporary posts you have. So we pounded those in, built some PVC goals, and we would just go to parks and I'd go in the field myself, and we'd play games. And we've been doing that since the fall. People mm. would come out and they'd say, "Hey, what organization are you with?" And who knows if they were saying because they wanted to get us in trouble. And we just said, "We're our own group, organizing ourselves." And we've been going since since the fall. We've we've switched over to basketball. We have about twenty five kids playing basketball around ten year old age, and another group doing soccer. And we just started flag football, and we had fifty kids out this weekend for the first weekend of flag football. So I think the dam is breaking. I think people are finally saying enough is enough. Um, we're not putting up with this anymore. Um, they, they have rules here in the county in Contra Costa County. You know, you can't do scrimmaging. You can't, you know, have any contact. Yeah, but what is unofficial organization? What so I, we what, just do what we want. What I don't get is outdoor transmission has never been a thing. Why don't we just give up the ghost? You, you, what I'm saying yeah. is, is there's two things we positively know about this virus. Outdoors is the best place you can be. Mm-hmm. They just had mm-hmm. an article in the L.A. Times today, the fucking L.A. Times, where they're like, well, we may be coasting down the backside of this, you know, with spring coming up and people going outdoors. It's going to even lessen it. It's like, it's going to lessen it. You guys were fucking championing the beaches being shut down six months right. ago, you fucking hypocrites. But by the way, <laughs> they always knew it was safe outdoors. It wasn't about not being outdoors. It was about keeping you indoors. That's what it was about. They always knew. There's no epidemiologist who thinks outdoors is dangerous for fucking anything. They knew it the whole time. This was them just flexing their muscle to keep you locked down, to keep you where they wanted you, where they could keep tabs on you. So now even the LA Times is saying, well, people are going outdoors. We're going to have even less of this. But there's two things we know. Outdoors was never an issue, and kids and young kids people were never an issue. Never an issue. Yep. So we got exactly. rid of youth sports, kids, and outdoors. Those are the two fucking things we knew early and often. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ, people. And you don't think it hurts kids to not be involved with these sports and not be outside and not it's be competing? Devastating. It's devastating. Who gives a shit about the kids? That's what I'm saying. Like, hey, we got to be safe. We got to be safe. Yes, you have to be safe. But it doesn't affect the kids, and outdoors is safe. So with that in mind, could somebody go, hey, this is what I want to do? I, I suggest, could someone from the city council go, hey, I got a plan. Why don't we open up uh, the outdoors and uh, use sports again? Or nothing. Or just lock it down. Or we're going to bust Tin Horn Flats because uh, they, they stayed open on their patio. That's, that's where you want your fucking resources to go? Jesus Christ. I know I sound like a madman. I don't know what's wrong with everybody. Wake the fuck up. These people don't have your best interests in mind. I don't know what they have in mind. It scares me to think about what they have in mind, but they're certainly not following the science. So stop listening and go outdoors. Go fucking get a soccer ball. Ugh. <laughs> Get a That's football. What this is to. Just fucking go out and take over the park. Just everyone at once. Just get all your fucking kids out there and start playing and let them bust you. Let them arrest That's you. What we did. Jesus we did. Christ! Did they try to bust you? We we had one incident. So we went to uh, we were we were running some uh, some of the basketball at a uh, middle school, and uh, the principal came out all huffy, and uh, I you know saw her coming up from from far away and sort of went oh shit. And and I was I was like you I was fucking pissed right so she comes up and she says 
what's going on here? You guys can't be out here. And I have a picture. I have like 20 kids spread across like six or seven hoops. And I'm, I'm blowing a whistle, yelling stuff at him, doing a drill. And, uh, he says, you can't be out here. We're in the middle of a pandemic. It's, it's, uh, it was back when it was shelter in place. We're shelter in place. And I said, that's not a law. He said, you can't be out here. I said, hey, we're just a bunch of random people out here uh, getting some exercise. And she said, you can't be out here. And I said, well, I'm not leaving. And then she kind of she walked off in a big huff. And I, I was, I, I was, at that point, I was getting pissed. So I just yelled at her. Just because, just because you're afraid of your own shadow doesn't mean we have to be. And about 20 oh. minutes later, the cops showed up. <laughs> and they told us, you know, hey, you, it, so at this point, I'm thinking, oh, fuck, this guy didn't become a cop so he could get kids off a basketball court because of principals, yeah. you know, being being at way, way she is. So he basically said, you have to leave. And I said, why? This is a public school. Um, and he said, you know, it's technically it's public school, but if she tells you to leave, it's still trespassing. And I said, what if we don't, what if we don't go? She said, you'll be arrested for trespassing. At this point, my brother, who's the general contractor, says, well, if we're at a park, are we okay? And he goes, yep, you're at a park, you're okay. So we kind of had that in our back pocket if we ever got busted at a park. Um, but at this point, I'm super pissed, and I'm, so I started yelling at the principal. I said, are you really proud of yourself? Are you proud of yourself? Look, look at all these kids. These kids aren't getting any exercise. They don't even No know. activity. They get no interaction. Are you proud of yourself? You're kicking They're us just off fucking the goddamn scared basketball sheep. court. And, Why and, is and the coach point, yelling the, at the, the principal? <laughs> <laughs> all right, John, we get it. Look, everyone, um, here's the thing. I think the people who are doing all the thinking for you have proven themselves to be incorrect or imbeciles or even nefarious. So start fucking thinking for yourself. Would you people, you want to go out, I, I, you want to go outside, you want to take your kid, you want to go to the park, you want to kick around the ball, you want to bring a few friends, start doing it. Would you please? I, you're waiting for Gavin Newsom or Garcetti or whoever the city council people are to give you the A-OK, they're not going to give you the A-OK. They're not going to open the fucking schools. They're not going to do anything. So just start thinking for yourself. Would you people? God damn it. It's weird. It's uh, You'll be, hap- ugh, you'll be yeah. happy to know that driving up PCH over the weekend, I think on Sunday morning, we uh, noticed that the uh, volleyball courts in Santa Monica had been uh, quietly unbulldozed and people were playing volleyball. I guess they oh, got some, yes. some new science and it said it was safe to play. Volleyball. Well, if you head back I- next week, you bring the body bags. <laughs> I don't think I I don't think I told you this. Saving Holy sh- I, I got to tell you really fast. I, I think I forgot to tell you this. So I go on a walk every day in, you know, like the North Valley Valley Village Studio City area. And yesterday I had my mask on because there was a fucking leaf blower blowing roach legs into my mouth while I was going by. But I don't think I told you generally if there's nobody on the street, I'll, you know, I'll carry it in my hand as a symbol of easy. Don't, you know, don't yell at me. I'm holding it. I'll put it on, you know, whatever. But I'm alone and I just walk and I carry it. I forgot to tell you, there was this couple in like really hardcore uh, masks with like a respirator thing on the front and they were on a walk. And I noticed the first time they walked by me, one on one side of the street, I was on the other. They jogged and said something. And I was like, oh, they're probably talking to each other. And then I saw because I was zigzagging and so were they. And I met them on the next street and they jogged and they said something, but they weren't talking like I didn't think they were talking to me. They were kind of talking to each other. The third time I finally realized what they were doing. If they if they were walking by a person, even if we were 10 feet apart, which we were, if they walked by a person who was not wearing a mask, they would start jogging really fast and yell mask under their masks. All right. Well, if those if that couple is listening, you pussies should jog off a fucking cliff. And let people get back to their fucking life because you are exacerbating this fucking problem. You could, we could all start reclaiming our society, except for those kind of pussy ass couples. Ugh. All right. Uh, Christian Toto, who I was enjoying talking to, is a film critic, and he has uh, got, I think, the is it the Golden Globes? What's coming up? This uh, Golden yes. Globes. Golden Globes is coming up, so he's, we're going to go over some of the stuff that uh, may be nominated. First, I'll tell you about uh, Liquid Death. Liquid Death, it is uh, a way to uh, hydrate without the plastic because it comes in a can, and uh it's interesting during this whole COVID thing, 
one of the interesting things that's, that's happening is tons of plastic and gloves and stuff is like ending up in rivers now. We're creating mm-hmm. so much trash now. Liquid Death actually helps you drink more water. This stuff is great. They dropped off, I don't know, eight or ten cases over here. I like the carbonated uh, stuff myself. 100% mountain water from the Alps. No processed tap water like most major bottled waters. Most of them just run it through their filter and give it to you as bottled water. Not them. Uh, By the way, you can find Liquid Death at uh, Whole Foods, 7-Eleven. And if you've been to uh, Texas uh, recently, or if you've been to Texas recently, you can find it there in Texas. You can find it at Walmart as well. It's Liquid Death, right, Dawson? Get two free koozies with your first order of any case of water at liquiddeath.com slash Adam. Just hit up their merch store. Add the koozie two-pack you want, and you'll get it free with your first case. Only at liquiddeath.com slash Adam. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be uh, back with Christian Toto, and we'll uh, review the uh, Golden Globes right after this. And now, a tip from the 1965 issue of Good Housekeeping. 120 Ways to Please a Man. Host is a role he'll enjoy a lot more if the right props are there when he needs them. If he's less than confident about carving for company, by all means, get an electric knife. Just one of 120 ways to please a man. Take notes. Now back to the Adam Carolla Show. Christian Toto has joined us, film critic, editor of HollywoodToto.com. And HollywoodToto.com is where you can go as a website. Good to see you, Christian. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, so we'll talk Golden Globes and a and a little beyond. I'm just looking at the uh, picture drama, and we're now at this place where I do not recognize most of the names for the best picture, which is not a good. It's not. It, it wouldn't be a good way to run the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Who's playing? Uh, well, the one team's in black. I don't know their name. And then there's this other team's in red, but I don't know who they are. It would, it, it's a way to generate less interest, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this is the problem with the awards for the last few years is a lot of times people don't know the nominees. Now, we have less of an excuse this year because a lot of them are on streaming platforms. So you can check them out at home much more easily than the past. But this is not, you know, King Kong versus Godzilla or Star Wars 8. This is usually more obscure films, independent films, uh, sort of for the uh, artistic sensibilities. They don't have the mass appeal that, that they've had in the past. Uh, yeah, can and I, the, yeah, Brian. Can I ask Christian a question first before we get into the Golden Globes too much? Hey, yeah. Christian, I, I'm just curious on your, your thought process because I love movies, but I don't I don't pay much mind to the Golden Globes as an award show. As a as a show, it's fun. You know, there's laughs, people are drinking, it's it's a good time. But like as awards, it's Honestly, it's barely second tier. Like they're not very taken very seriously, right? Like I, people, I don't think she get too worked up over the Golden Fucking Globes. Honestly, well, in the past, it was the event where the actors would be drinking right. at the awards, or they'd be stumbling onto the stage, or they they'd be a little bit lo- looser. So I agree. But in recent years, I think sort of the media in general has said, "Oh, wait, maybe we should take this more seriously." And also, a lot of the actors when they're up for the big awards, they treat this like an audition in a sense. Hey, if I give a great speech at the Golden Globes, it in- you know improves my chances of winning an Oscar. I think they see it as sort of a, an audition of sorts. The uh, In the drama department, we have The Father, which I did not see. We have Mank, I mm-hmm. guess. About, yeah, Herman Mankiewicz. Uh, we got uh, Nomad Land. Francis McDormand. We have uh, Promising Young Woman. And we have The Trial of the Chicago Seven, which I have heard of, but I don't even know if I've seen or heard That's the good. other ones. Christian, Promise- have you seen, have you seen I, all I, five? Sorry? Have you seen all? Five? Sorry to interrupt, Gina. Have you seen, I've seen all most, five, but not all? It's, yeah. You know, it's a, it's been a weird year. I've been trying to catch up with a lot of stuff, and uh, I, you know, I, I suspect most people haven't seen two of the five. That's oh, the father is almost guess. impossible to find. <laughs> the what? The father? The father is almost impossible to find. I mean, so that one's coming out in wider release this weekend. So you know, uh, part of it. Listen. 
one of the problems with the Oscars in this whole award season is that often people can't even see the movies in question. Right. They're held out till January, you know, after the some of the award nominations are, are handed out. And again, this year has been topsy-turvy with the pandemic. So they've been bending the rules. They've been kind of stretching out, you know, wh what films are available, uh, when the dates are. I mean, the Oscars was already several months away it's coming in april so nothing is normal this year but that's that is part of the problem that you know if you're not in la or new york chances are you can't even see these movies uh, can i ask you yeah. quickly have you seen promising young woman i have I'm sorry. i i haven't yet and i'm dying to see it are you is it would would either of you say it's worth it because I'm, I'm really hoping it lives up to the hype it's interesting. I think it did not live up to the hype. I think Carrie Mulligan is excellent in the film. I, I get why it's a, a hot button issue. It's a story about a woman who kind of tricks men. She pretends that she's drunk and then she kind of lures them back and then kind of turns the tables on them. You know, given the current, you know, uh, cultural situation, I get it. I, I just think it had some flaws. And otherwise, I did think it ended very strongly, which is not something that I often say about films. I, I feel like sticking the landing is tough these days. But I, I think that film has a very provocative ending that felt oddly satisfying. Christian, you and I are on the almost the exact same page with that particular movie. Good movie, undeniably good. Carrie Mulligan, really good. Really strong ending, like you said. But overall, best picture material? Mm, it's, 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 it's good. It's just, I don't know. I'm not going to grab some of my little pals like, you have to see Promising Young Woman. Well, let's stick with the theme, the Olympic theme of, of sticking the landing. And this won't be a perfect analogy. But it seems to me that when you take ice skating, they do the compulsory part and then they do the freestyle part, you know? And I feel like movies used to just all be the freestyle part, like who's got the best movie. But now there's kind of a compulsory part, which is, well, what's the subject matter? And we'll fact, we'll fold that in. We'll factor that in. And if you're, if you, if you find yourself saying a lot of like, it was good, but I don't <laughs> think it's a best picture type. Well, then they're probably factoring in some of the compulsory stuff. And I would argue we don't really want that as consumers for the award show. Like, the theme is the theme, but let's not factor it in so heavily or or mm -hmm. even at all. It really shouldn't factor in at all what the theme is. And I feel like it's being factored in a little bit more every year. And people are starting to catch on to that and kind of lose interest. What do you yeah, think, You know, Christian? I think it's built into this whole process. You know, for a while, a movie had that awards sense to it. You can almost smell it. It was serious. It was gravitas, you know, based on a true story, someone imitating a famous musician. But now we've kind of gone a, a few steps beyond that, where, as Adam said, it's the theme that we're talking about. It's the concept behind it. It's not it's the greatest picture, but it speaks to the moment or it speaks to a mood. Right. And, you know, it's great when movies do that. It's actually interesting and it makes it more uh, you can talk about it more. But I, I think we're losing something. You know, when I was younger, the Oscar brand was gold to me, no pun intended. It was like, if it was the best picture, chances are it was, or maybe in the top five. Now you have to kind of look back and say, is that really worthwhile? And once that doubt comes into your mind, I think it, it lessens the value of the Oscars. No Man is, is a good example of a movie like that this year, where it's undeniably good. It's a really good movie, but it's very timely and it's very of the moment, and it's, mm -hmm. it's people struggling, and it's 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 Amazon, and it's it's all the things that are making up this you know zeitgeist. Yeah, I agree. I thought I think that one kind of works in both ways. It is of the moment, but it's also very good. Oh, it really feels good. very fresh too. It's a story that we don't see a lot. It's it has a authenticity to it, which I really enjoyed. So, uh, but yeah, it's that's an issue. And what Adam is suggesting is going to be codified in a year or two where the Oscars will literally say, if you don't check these boxes, your film is not going to be nominated for Best Picture. So that's, that's right. not official yet. It's sort of been announced. But in a couple of years, I'm not sure the exact year, but it's coming soon. So that thinking is going to be part of the process. And I can't help but think that's going to affect, well, if I'm a storyteller, what stories do I want to tell? What stories do I want to avoid? And that's that's a shame. I can tell you someone who makes documentaries, you already sort of factor in like, well, what's the theme? Because, you know, some themes are favorable and other themes aren't. You'll have a better chance of getting into this film festival, though I'm not getting into any film festivals. But uh, you would have a better chance of getting this or they're looking for that. You know, it's just, you know, I made a movie about a black race car driver called Uppity uh, that made it on everyone's top 10 list. But... I wasn't setting out to do it 
to be a favorable theme. It just turned out to be a favorable theme. You just get a lot more attention when you have a favorable theme. The big problem with all this kind of shit that uh, the Oscars are going to try to do with the sort of prerequisite whatever is all it does is make people f- raise one eyebrow and go, Ask questions. is that the best film of the year or is it just checking the boxes you set out in advance? You know, and that's the problem. And when you get there, then again, you have the difference between the Super Bowl and the Oscars. Nobody wants, no one says, is Tom Brady really the best quarterback or is he just there? Because no, he's just the best. And those are the two best teams. And that's why they're there. And we all watch it and we're satisfied. And there's no arguments when it's over. Um, The Oscars is turning into something else. And as you do that, you will lose the interest of the people. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, and you know, I think the media plays a role in this. There was an article in Variety recently, and it was kind of a voting guide for the Oscar season, and it listed all the different categories and, you know, LGBTQ films and, and diversity films. And and toward the end, it said, we're not saying vote a certain way. We just want to let you know what's going on. I'm thinking, well, it, you kind of are. I mean, you can't really have it both ways. And that is frustrating. And I, I would think ultimately it's frustrating for the actors who are trying their very best to make great performances and make the movies that are going to stand the test of time. And if they're judged in a different way, it's, it's, it's like cheating on the finals. It, it feels wrong. Well, back to uh, what you can see in the theater and what you can see in the theater now, of course, well, when I was in well, theater, nothing, but <laughs> Oh, when I was in uh, Naples, Florida a month and a half ago, I was just walking through a mall, just meh, open theater. Go in and see a movie if you want. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, it's open. You can go into the theaters. Now, of course, we could never do that in California because I don't know why, but we could just never do. Also, we did this fucking thing where, like, we spent so much time talking about what reckless, out-of-control, homicidal maniacs Florida was that now we can't eat shit and go back and do what they've been doing for a long time because it would make us wrong. So we have to go, we're staying the course, even if it's a fucking retarded course. But I don't know. Is there any discussion about opening movie theaters yes. in California and when and what? I don't know what the rule, what's the Walmarts of the world or the Trader Joe's. Can't we spread people out and put a mask on and fire up the uh, ventilation? I said yes right before you said California. I do have a news story about New York's plans, and I imagine if New York is on board, then hopefully we'll follow suit. Oh, okay. So I want to tell people in California that essentially if New York is opening and they're opening schools and they're opening theaters or they have a plan for indoor dining or whatever – the, you know, Max, Bad, you have to find the uh, professor from Lost in Space, the TV show, because we're essentially that guy. Do you guys remember that character? Yes. He was he harried. He was like, oh, my, oh, my. He was sort of gay before we knew what gay was. You know, I'll Don't- take the boy. <laughs> kind of Don Knotts ish. Yes. He was Barney Fife ish. Right. And he was just a perpetual coward. And that's what essentially uh, we are. Jonathan Harris was the uh, actor's name. He'll be missed. He's got to be dead because he was 60 and 55. Yeah, he died in 02. Oh, oh man. Oh. Yeah, a pretty, pretty good run. Sorry to it's all the out there. Adam, I also think it's interesting that the actors who you would think could have the most invested in, in us getting back into theaters have been so whisper quiet about this whole process. Instead of saying, hey, it's safe. They're taking the precautions. Come back to the theater. We miss you. Let's tell a great story again. I, I don't see any actors out there saying, kind of sharing any kind of message like that while the industry is basically collapsing and streaming is, is taking over. Um. We have decided, well, first off, acting is really a a giant high school and it's a popularity contest. As we figured out, anyone can be fired and anyone can be hired and anyone can be replaced. Ask Kevin Spacey. You can shoot a movie and you can shoot a whole movie, be replaced, and the guy replaces you is nominated for an Oscar. I don't think he won, right, Brian? No, he didn't win, but who um, just died? Uh, a plumber. There's, yes, there's 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 countless, countless, countless examples of here today and gone tomorrow, and it's one big stupid 
girls that sit around, you know, popular girls that sit in the quad. And you got to fit in with those popular devs that are. That's right. Yes. The mean girls. That sit in the quad. And then there is a theme. And the theme is uh, this pandemic is a killer. It's coming after all of us. And if you don't just parrot back exactly what you're being told, then you'll be hung out to dry like Dr. Drew or any other citizen who uh, thought it'd be a good idea to weigh in with an opinion that may have been a little counter to, to what the orthodoxy was. So considering... Actors are world-class pussies and some of the scaredest people I've fucking ever met. And and you get the girls, you get the popular Debs in the quad, and then you get cowards, and it's a big popularity contest. And if you send out the wrong tweet, you're not going to work again. Then, of course, the cowards zip it. They're fucking silent. The people never stop running their mouth about everything. They run their mouth about every subject. How come nothing? Hey, Mark Ruffalo, what do you have to say, you big fucking pussy? Why don't you start talking about this? Everyone's locked down. Your industry's going under. The theaters are going under. How about you chime in, Mark Ruffalo, with your opinions about everything all the time? But silent. Why? Don't make them angry. They're fucking cowards. Yeah, I don't want to make them angry. I think I did. They're fucking cowards. There's no other way about it. And... If enough of them, because they control popular culture, if enough of them rose up, there would be some change happening pretty quickly. But they'll never do it because they're scared. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that's I think that's actually their bully pulpit, that they could talk about things like that in a way you describe and say, hey, look at the science. Uh, we, we want things to open up. But it's not just us. It's the people running the theaters, the people, the ushers and the crowds and the, the local you know restaurants next door. It, it affects so many people. Yeah. But they're silent because we have proven time and time again that if you get out of your lane on this COVID thing, if you, you, you have to follow the full panic porn trail. You have to just stay on it. If you get a little bit off the trail, then you're going to be deplatformed or dismissed or shut down. It's going to fuck with your career. So people are cowards and they don't want to fuck with their career. And... I shouldn't even call them cowards because it's it's not the boogeyman. It has been proven time and time again yeah, that somebody be scared of. you uh, ask Gina Carano if uh, sending out a few tweets doesn't get you wished out into the cornfield. Do you have the uh, professor from Lost in Space? Uh, I'm, I'm oh, doctor? For, maybe? Um, yeah, it's a prof- Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith is Dr. what you're Dr. Smith, that's um, what I'm oh thinking dear. of. Oh, dear. I found, I found a montage of him <laughs> screaming in fear. Okay. Oh, well, this is okay. it. Oh, All right. Good. Now, just, good. just picture, uh, you picture Governor Gavin Newsom and uh, Mayor Garcetti when we play this montage. <laughs> Good at it. Wow. It's a thing. There's a monster in my pain. All right. What was his purpose exactly? In the doctor's defense, most of what he's screaming at was legitimately terrifying. That's true. (laughs) That's true. By the way, Adam, you you talked about Gina Carano. I don't think she was fairly treated. So I reached out to five different groups that specialize in women in film, empowering women, making sure their voices are heard. And uh, I said, you know, what do you think? Do you have a reaction to Gina Carano's firing from The Mandalorian? No one answered me. So oh, yeah. No, they're, they're big champions of women rights, except for when they don't give a fuck. Yes, of course, because they're fucking hypocrites. And by the way, as we learned from Chris Harris or Harrison from The Bachelor. Harrison, I, can't, I think. Uh, there's plenty of fragging, collateral fragging that can go on. So do not defend Gina Carano and do not defend The Bachelor chick. At the uh, at the Southern Ball, because you can get shit canned by either defending them or saying, I think we should offer them some grace or not have a rush to judgment. So you can get fucked up, too, without actually being involved with the crime. Yes, Brian. 
Can I ask Christian a movie question if we have the yeah. last couple of minutes? Uh, of the movies we have not talked about today, uh, maybe not Golden Globe movies or whatever, what, what would you say your best bets are for uh, for like major Oscar nominations, best picture or multiple nominations? Uh, I saw Sound of Metal, excellent, excellent movie. Uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. I'm wondering other movies maybe on your radar. You're like, oh, this will be this will be up for some awards. You know, it's funny. I think this year I've been seeking different kinds of movies out than I usually do. I, I, I just sort of a way to kind of cope with the pandemic. There's a movie called Alone, and there's two movies called Alone last year. Okay. One was a zombie movie, which was perfectly fine, but the other one was a a woman in distress. There's a man trying to stalk her down, trying to kill her. Sort of a two person story. It's excellent. I think it's on Hulu right now. Yes. And uh, just a simple, gritty thriller, beautifully acted. You know tightly coiled and i thought i i didn't have more fun at the movies you know at home <laughs> that i had watching that one so i really highly recommend that one alone yeah. cool. let's check I, the I wish... rotten tomato score on that one i'm curious i we should have watched that the other night we just wanted to watch a psychological thriller and i saw that and i was like oh that looks good and then like a moron we ended up watching because i was like oh let's try this one we have to talk about kevin oh that, what a great movie <laughs> Not not fun, not fun. Well, quite un, quite unnerving. Oh God! <laughs> I watched oh, Olympus has fallen for the third time. <laughs> uh, it's ninety. 90- Wait, hold on. It's Kevin. Christian, Christian, have you seen Greenland? I did. I was I was pleasantly surprised. By me too. Were we? <laughs> yes, we were too. Um, you know, there's sort of a cult around Gerard Butler now where he makes these sort of really cheesy action movies and you're, the guilty pleasures. But this one was rather sober and rather understated. It was I'm surprising. So glad to hear you say that. I liked it, too. Uh, it's 93 with the critics, but 56 with the people. Ooh, it's a cat. Alone For is. Alone? Yeah, that's a weird one. I mean, I get it. It's like a good critic movie, but mm-hmm. why blow uh, fresh with the peeps? Um All right, let me hit uh, Dodge here. Dodge has officially uh, opened orders for the new 2021 Durango SRT Hellcat, the most powerful SUV ever, exclusive for 2021. Features a 710-horsepower engine, new aggressive exterior styling, new interior with a driver-centric cockpit. All buyers, now this is important, all buyers are going to receive a full day of professional instruction at the Bondurant High Performance Driving School. I've told you guys it's important when you get in a high-performance vehicle to learn how to handle it. Deliveries begin early this year. Dodge was ranked number one for initial quality and best driver appeal for mass market brands by J.D. Powers. First U.S. brand ever to be ranked number one in initial quality and appeal in the same year. So see your uh, local dealer, or you can visit online. Go to Dodge.com today. Schedule a test drive and have some fun at Dodge.com. All right. uh, Let me give a plug to Christian Toto and tell you uh, Hollywood and Toto can be – T-O-T-O.com is where you can go and shoot him a tweet at the Hollywood in Toto as well. Uh, any place else you want us to go to look for you, Christian? Sure. I also contribute to the Daily Wire and uh, Newsbusters, justthenews.com, and I should soon be appearing at Real Clear Investigations. So uh, thanks. Good to see you again, my friend. And we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with uh, Gina Bald in the news. Give me the news with crap. News with Gino Grad, breaking viral, weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gino Grad, stuff they saw on TMZ. Joe Biden, Kamala, big news with Gina Gino Grad. The news with Gina Grad. Well, we do have some breaking news as we record this, but I'm going to bump that for some other news because um, this just in, Adam, Brian, and Gina are morons, and here's why. This is not news. I got I got a shit ton of feedback, and I don't know if you guys did too, about the Howie Mandel 
purse, bag, what's the word we're looking for? Tote. When we showed the picture of him with the hand and it's a handbag. purse. Oh, handbag. The joke oh, was that it was yeah. a handbag and none of us came up with it. I, knew I got it was, a lot of mail about that. I knew there was something there and it's stupid. <laughs> it's I should have figured it out. It's a handbag. Okay. So the actual breaking news as we record this, uh, an L.A. County Sheriff's Department uh, deputy has told uh, TMZ Sports that um, – that Tiger Woods was involved in a very serious crash this morning. That would be uh, Tuesday morning, uh, about 7 a.m. Um, as we record this, he is in surgery for multiple leg injuries. Um, he was hospitalized right away. They the, the car flipped multiple times, was pulled out with the jaws of life. This rollover traffic collision happened near Palos Verdes, if you're uh, familiar with the California, Southern California area. Area. Unclear what caused the accident. Uh, we do have pictures. Cops are investigating. Uh, they don't believe that alcohol was involved, but they did not say whether any substance in general was possibly involved. We're looking at a picture. It's pretty. It that car rolled, is, it's rolled pretty down bad. an embankment. Yeah, there's farther pictures that show kind of how far it rolled. It's, yeah. it's pretty hairy. And uh, yeah, he's Tiger's 45. He was in the area for the Genesis Invitational Golf Tournament at Riviera Country Club in the Pacific Palisades. Tiger's agent says he sustained multiple leg injuries. And like I said, currently in surgery. And if you saw the documentary, he was already pretty messed up when it came to the back and, and the leg. And I, who knows how long he'll be out or if he'll ever come back. Did uh, He was driving and no one else yes, was in was the alone. car? Uh, apparently... It, it, as we understand it, he was alone. It was seven in the morning. It's kind of a weird thing, you know, when people go, he was driving down the street and lost control of the car. Like, I was thinking, like, what does that really mean? Like, you lost yeah. control of the car. It should mean that you were speeding or something, unless a rabbit ran out and you tried to avoid it by yanking the wheel one way and or or something. Yeah, but, or you bent down to get something and you took the wheel with you by accident. Yeah, and it's kind of the problem with if you have a DUI or a, a drug-based sort of DUI in your background, then unfortunately, when you get into an accident driving alone, then people go, oh, I wonder yeah, what he was know, doing. Yeah. yeah, right. we don't know. But unfortunately, that's the way humans work. Or maybe not unfortunately. Maybe we're just always trying to kind of make sense of something. But... It seems like just kind of going off the road on your own feels like fell asleep at the wheel or speeding or something. But uh, and also, I wonder if the car has one of those alert things where it just mm -hmm. contacts the the authorities or you have to call. Like, I always feel horrible. The trapped in the car part just seems brutal. It's got to be delightful for the paramedics because they're used to pulling up old geezers and like scraping right. off homeless guys with their own filth. Like, hey, it's Tiger hey. Woods. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, I have a little bit of an update uh, right now from TMZ. So I'm just going to read it as it's as it's uh, presented here on TMZ. Uh, Tiger was staying at a hotel where a major network TV show was being shot. Production sources tell TMZ when the director arrived just before 7 a.m., Tiger was driving his SUV very fast as he was leaving the property, almost hit the director's car. The director was shaken enough to tell production staff about it after he parked. A crew member who saw Tiger as he got in the SUV at the hotel tells TMZ once Tiger got in the vehicle, there was a delay in driving off and he appeared agitated and impatient and took off very quickly. Um, this is just in the last half hour. Contrary to the initial release sent out by the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, a source with the fire department tells us now that the jaws of life were not used to free Tiger from the crash. So, the, I, again, I'm just getting this now. I love when these news stories are like, they used the jaws of life, and then it's like, we didn't use them. Don't you feel what? like that's pretty discernible? Okay. Yeah, well, that's it's, it's the a thing. black I mean, and white. Exactly. It's not, it's not how did he get out head first or feet first? Did you use this giant machine or didn't you? Yeah, I think the way we work now is we go, well, it's a better story if we say jaws of life. So we'll just get <sighs> sure. out of the gate with that, and then we'll figure but, it out later. But when you look at the car it is hard to figure out how else he would be pulled out i'm i'm looking at a picture now where there's no um windshield maybe they pulled him out through the a, windshield probably I, does it look like a lexus to me i'm trying to figure out what the rims are 
Anyway, um, here's the whole thing about driving away angry. Um, Because we all understand that it's like it's a trope in movies where it's like they get into an argument, husband and wife, and then you hear the car peeling out like down the street. You kind of fishtail out. Yeah, Yeah, like I'm angry and now I'm going to drive in a dangerous manner that only really endangers me because you're safe at home in the hotel or at your house or whatever. Yeah, it's it's not really a well thought out process because all you're doing is is potentially giving yourself a ticket, potentially killing yourself in your car, and as far as the person you're angry at, you're just getting away from them faster. They couldn't be happier. Yeah. Taking yeah. the deadly four thousand pound machine away from them. Right. All right. Well we wish yeah, him we'll keep up. luck. Yeah. Uh, an arrest, Emma Coronel Aispuro. She is the 31-year-old wife of Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. La Chapa. Uh, La Mm. Chapa. She was arrested Monday at an airport in D.C. uh, for drug trafficking charges, according to federal authorities, but that's not all. Um, Aispuro was apprehended at Dulles International Airport. A Justice Department news release said that she'll face charges of conspiracy to distribute cocaine, meth, heroin, and marijuana to import to the U.S. That's not the El Chapo girlfriend I know, (laughs) but okay. Oh, wait, there's more. Maybe this will sound more familiar. Uh, Talk about standing by your man. The dual U.S.-Mexican citizen allegedly helped El Chapo escape from a maximum security prison in 2015. Yeah, it's always funny, these stories, when you tell them to a guy, they're sort of enticing, Mm -hmm. sound marginally sexual, and sort of alluring. Like, eh, all right, I know she's a girlfriend of a drug kingpin, but kind of like the cut of her jib. Yeah, (laughs) she seems loyal. Yeah, I like that. Also, she has a pedigree because according to the federal court documents, her father was a member of the Sinaloa cartel. So she knows her way around. Yeah, you know, in in another life, I'd like to either date her or the blonde chick that got thrown out of the basketball arena for John with uh, LeBron (laughs) because LeBron had given the evil eye to her husband. That's right. I mean, like I feel like those are a couple of good keepers. You know what I mean? They f- they'll yeah. fight for Spit you, fires. man. She's That's down. right. Mm-hmm. Tiger so, was driving yeah. a Genesis. Oh, that's why I couldn't really figure out it was a Hyundai, uh, the luxury brand. Yeah, for Hyundai. Another Simpsons voice actor has stepped down from voicing his character of color. Any guesses what the character is? Yeah, it's got to be the police. The policeman? No, no, what? no, uh, no, not Dr. Hibbert. I, I predicted this. Oh, uh, y- a year ago because it's Harry Shearer. That's Remember right. Remember when Hank Azaria stepped down? I'm like, yep. Fucking Dr. Hibbert's a white guy. How long until he's gone? You are right. According to the rap, Harry Shearer, who is white, will no longer voice the black character of Dr. Hibbert. He'll be replaced by voice actor Kevin Michael Richardson, uh, who does a lot of stuff for uh, Family Guy and and Seth MacFarlane's uh, whole. Empire. Shearer has voiced Hibbert since 1990. He also voices Flanders and Skinner and everybody. Um, he joins Azaria, who you said, who last year announced he'll no longer voice Apu, um, in part because of the documentary that came out in 2017, The Problem with Apu, that brought attention to the subject. Azaria still voices um, Wiggum and Mo and a bunch of other characters. My problem with all this, and we're just running down this path, Faster and faster every day. There's something, you know, Disney is giving warnings on cartoons. I think they have a a Muppets warning and stuff like that. Um, Here is my problem, because everyone says, well, so what? I mean, I don't know, progress or how could it hurt or whatever. My problem with it is, as I've told you guys before, there's two problems. A, it uses sort of time and money when there's a limited amount of time and money, but it also kind of satiates and that's the problem. It's kind of like, Hey, look at us. We're doing something now. It doesn't help anyone in the black community. It doesn't help anyone who really needs any help is in that group. Any group they do. It's just, it's, it's like the getting rid of the Redskins doesn't help indigenous people. So, but it satiates uh, the white man. So we're kind of like, well, our job is done here. (laughs) 
And it's like, no, there's still a lot of problems, and we should talk about those problems. We don't really want to get into the real problems. So we, these are much easier problems for us to get into, uh, much more sort of cut and dried. And we keep doing it. It never makes a difference. And then we just keep doing more of it, and it still never makes a difference. And then we just keep doing more of it. So I don't really care but it is one more conversation we're having about uh, Dr. Hibbert and one less conversation about kids getting shot in Chicago. So my feeling is not making a difference. What less difference can be made than voiceover acting? Like how, what percentage of the human population knows that Harry Shearer is the voice of Dr. Hibbert? Adam, I'll go less than 10%. <laughs> well, also, well, you're also... <laughs> Acting is the process of sort of inhabiting the skin of other people. You know what I mean? You're like you're make believe. You're trying to do this thing, number one. And then also, I now if it's if 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 Harry Shear is doing the guy from Bill Cosby, do you know the Bill Cosby character has got the hat? The Cosby kids. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Cosby yeah. Albert? I'm the fat sure. Albert, Bill Cosby, Boo Baba guy, you know that guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if he's so, here's my thing. Doctor Hibbert did not sound black to me. He just sounded like a character to me. Now, there's an Apu argument because he's very stereotypy and doesn't make a difference anyway. But if you're just kind of creating a character who happens to be black, why do we? It's my same. It's it's my exact same argument with blackface minstrel show versus Jimmy Fallon playing Chris Rock. Like right. those are different things. Like doing just a stereotypical black character. That's one thing you creating your own sort of character that, that feels like something different to me. Well, and also Mike Henry, if that name sounds familiar to anyone who was a fan of the Cleveland show, the, the Cleveland character was voiced by a white guy for many years. And then that, of course, had to go. But yeah, you didn't think it, it wasn't, it, from what I remember, it wasn't done in a sort of a stereotypical, demeaning, nothing way. It was just the, the character Cleveland. But he's, um, I want to say, uh, I can't remember the name of the guy who replaced him, but he was replaced, God, like four years ago, maybe. Yeah. Are Again, we here? it's all important stuff, except for it's not important at all. It makes no difference. <laughs> To anyone who well, really has problems. And you mentioned the uh, Muppets. I'll just give you the quick overview on that. Disney Plus has, you know, because we talked about it with the Disney movies, but now there's disclaimers in front of 18 episodes of The Muppet Show. Um, it appears before and it reads, this program includes negative depictions and or mistreatment of people or cultures. These stereotypes were wrong then and they're wrong now. Rather than remove the content, we want to acknowledge this harmful well, impact. Well, let me ask it. you this, Disney Plus. If it was wrong then, why the fuck did we do it? You know what I mean? I mean, it was wrong when the Hanson company did it. Did they know it was wrong at the time? Were these egregious offenses? My guess, of course, is no. The Swedish chef. Is that really one of them? I I, I don't know. That'd be tough because he's white, but it might be. So that's what, I mean, that's the question everyone wants. Well, what is it? The only example I could find was Johnny Cash performing in front of a Confederate flag. I couldn't find anything from like a skit or anything that they were talking about specifically. Mm. They did say that the episodes are hosted by uh, Steve Martin, Peter Sellers, Kenny Rogers, Joan Baez, Johnny Cash, and Debbie Harry. So if you want to go and- Well, that's a regular clan rally right there. (laughs) But it didn't give any other examples. Well, Disney Um, Plus should just pull them off then because uh, I know they don't want to leave any money on the table, but uh, just take them down then. But they're well, not going to do that. Crazy. Yeah, Jesus, I know. Let's not get crazy. All right. Uh, you asked about movie theaters. There is yes. um, a little bit of news on that for New York. So hopefully that means there might be news for us. Um, New York wants to reopen things with a few tweaks by March 5th. So just a couple of days, really. Governor Andrew Cuomo said on Monday that theaters will be allowed to open at 25 percent capacity with no more than 50 people per screen. AMC Entertainment confirmed they'll be reopening all 13 of their locations on March 5th. Um, CEO Adam Aaron said Governor Cuomo's announcement that movie theaters can reopen in New York in the first week of March is another important step. Blah, 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 blah. Theaters in New York City, which along with L.A., 
um, of course, we're the examples, the two biggest movie markets. We've been shut for almost a year. The 50 person max feels arbitrary because there are some huge theaters out there. Like the Chinese theater holds yeah. a few hundred people. The Cinerama Dome. Yeah, yeah that's just all part well, it's gotta of it. has got to be 25%. The if, retarded math. If your 25% in your theater is 75 people, you're maxed out at 50, I Weird. think is what they're saying. Feels arbitrary, but no. Yeah. Well, this is one of those big bureaucracy arguments where the you you would say if you're a theater manager, well, you said 25 percent capacities, right? Right. Yeah. All right. Well, this theater holds 500 people, so 25 percent be 125 people. Sir, we're maxed out at 50. Mm-hmm. That yeah, but- that's what that's how this argument <laughs> sure. would work. And why is the- why is fucking Disneyland still shut down? Yeah, the zoos are open. Disney World. Was there any reason yeah, to ever in, in, in LA? Yes. You know, yeah. Almost apples. Should we have ever shut the outdoor zoos? Seems like we should have never shut the outdoor zoos. But okay, everyone goes along with everything. But yeah, Disney should be open. Theater should be open. Or just just open them with the same protocols that the rest of the world is using. California. I don't. It seems I, it, almost too simple. Yeah, at a certain point, it feels kind of punitive. Like, is there a punishment part of this that's going on? Like, have we been bad citizens? Like, why are we being punished? Well, do you remember, I guess it was over the summer, um, we sent, we, Newsom sent uh, people to go down to Disney World and have a, you know, root and toot and good weekend and investigate how they're doing it so we could reopen. And then they come back and he said, yeah. Yeah. And he said, nah, no, not us. So we never got a reason why. Why them and not us? We never got that reason. Although the reason is it wouldn't be um, it wouldn't be going along with all the other things that are still closed in California. Yeah. I also had this thought today, which is if school schools being closed is very symbolic because once schools reopen, then it's like, hey, why the fuck aren't the theaters open and why isn't Disneyland open and why is there any? Once schools symbolically, I mean, once they open, but symbolically they mean a lot. You know what I mean? So it's like if you fuck sticks would open the fucking schools, it would send a symbolic message for the rest of the businesses that are shuttered that, okay, maybe it's time to get back. Opening schools says we're getting back to normal. That's what opening yeah. school says. And for some reason, we hate that message in California. We don't want the message of getting back to normal. So as long as the schools are closed, you can, if you want to talk about opening Disney or opening a movie theater, it's like, well, the schools are closed. You really think we should open Disneyland with the schools being closed? Do you think we should open the movie theaters? Or you think we should have indoor dining? I mean, the schools are still closed. Do you think we should really have soccer or sports or Little League or something? The schools are still closed. Yes, as long as you imbeciles keep schools closed, then we're sort of in a weird holding pattern here. I would argue that when schools open or in any community where schools open, where they go, the schools are opening, open, I think it sends a message to all the other businesses that it's time to open as well. But we don't like that message in California because we love fear. Mm. We fucking love it, which is it's on the state flag. weird. All right, let's was, do one more, Gina Grant. Okay, and I was just thinking, you know, well, you know, come to think of it, a lot, most of the rides at Disneyland and California Adventure are inside. And then I was like, wait a second, giant, you know, well, yeah, but like, you know, you think of Space Mountain or, you know, there's always an inside element. Mm-hmm. Um, but those are giant, like, warehouses, heavily ventilated. The mm-hmm. only attraction I can think of that they wouldn't be able to do would be the lobby of Mickey's Haunted Mansion when they cram everyone in the room. Is mm. the ceiling going up or are you uh, going yeah. up? Everything else, it could be very well ventilated. Star That's Tours would be a problem if they still, you know, with the, with the, with the, the, the screen, the little movie Who theater, goes basically. goes to Star Tours? Do Star they Tours call it series? Mickey's Haunted Mansion now? Isn't it? Is it Mickey's Haunted Mansion? Or it was it always just the, just the Haunted, haunted the Mansion. Haunted. Oh, at at Halloween know. time, I think they rebranded get Jack Skellington. That's haunted the only time I ever see it. But it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it? Is it not Mickey's? No. Right. Well, it's not owned by Mickey. Technically, <laughs> everything sorry. there is Mickey's, but <laughs> it's all Mickey's. this is yeah. uh, the Haunted Mansion. This is the Haunted Mansion. All right. Let's, oh, bring, it, everywhere. let's bring it home, Gina Grant. Oh, and by the way, 
if you want to see somebody get a cease and desist, go watch the last uh, pandemic special of South Park. I can't believe that's still airing. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina. That was the news with Gina Grad. They Ima- put Mickey in some pretty precarious positions. Imagine going out to dinner indoors in a restaurant and sitting in a booth and then going to a movie theater. People of California. What are you, some kind of death defying stuntman? <laughs> yeah, I'm Joey Chitwood and my thrills, <laughs> my, my uh, circus of thrills. All right, uh, last but not least, we got Geico over here. Do you own, do you rent your home? We you probably do one or the other. How about you bundle it up with your automotive policy? Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. Good thing, too, because you already have so much to do. Just go to Geico.com, get a quote, see just how much you could be saving. Geico makes it easy at Geico.com. All right. You can go to AdamCrolla.com. Lots of live shows. Reno is uh, selling out pretty quick. Virginia Street Brew House, uh, March 19th and 20th. So says uh, Max Pata. Out here in Los Angeles, Jam in the Van is going to be Weed and Hooch. Uh, we're going to have some Mangria there and some cannabis, and Adam Ray is going to come out. We're going to do some stand-up shows. Just go to adamcroll.com for all the live stuff. I want to thank uh, Kevin Faulkner and, uh, for coming out. Hopefully, uh, he'll be Governor Faulkner at some point. Christian Toto as well. And until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Bald and Gina saying mahalo.